to I Nature Watch as one of the directors and uh, my hobby is birding. Uh, I have done the bird survey for four years and more uh, for, uh, from the beginning of uh, the Ambi Valley Biodiversity Park. So I will start presenting <clears throat> before any delay. People can join in and I'm sure she, uh, she will uh, come in in between. Okay. Hello friends, good evening to one and all. Everyone loves birds, who doesn't? Who doesn't like the of the country in other parts? This is how they play with us. This is how everyone loves to enjoy this thing. Here we are going to explore. Coming, let us explore together the winged wonders or the feathered world. There are lots of gardens everywhere. There are well manicured gardens with lovely uh, landscapes, and certain gardens are ill kept. You have Zen gardens, Zeriscape gardens zoological gardens, botanical gardens, and above all, we have Ambivali Large Biodiversity Park. This has got everything possible. I'll go through how it looks. First, coming to Ambivali, where is it? It is near Kalyan. It's got 40 acres of forest land around. Ladybird Environmental Consultancy has introduced biodiversity special plants designed to attract bees, birds, butterflies, and even bats. Ambivali Biodiversity Park houses 10,000 saplings of herbs, shrubs, and trees. It boasts an impressive variety of 388 distinct wildlife species. The success of the park is attributed to the CRS activity of DCP Bank and the visionary dedication of Dr. V. Shibalakshmi. The project commenced in 2021 through collaborated efforts involving Kalyan Dombivali Municipal Corporation, DCB Bank, and I Nature Watch Foundation. Today, it stands fully developed destination and ready to welcome visitors. The biodiversity of Ambivali boasts of 120 species of wild plants, 149 species of insects, 84 species of birds, and 24 species of herpetophonia. It has lawn for worms, flowers for seeds and nectar, hiding sites and nesting sites as well. You have natural places like the trees and the flowers, but there are some places in a garden where people, especially in those colder places, they do put up unnatural feeds, which is also good for winter where the bird is starving, he can visit and definitely take a small feed from your bird feeders. There are unnatural bird houses which have been put up and unnatural water spaces, which are also good for those birds who really in those places where bird houses are short and water is short. We in Ambivali have natural things, good worms and good hiding sites as well. A bird friendly garden is that which requires for birds for water, food, shelter, nesting sites, and protection from predators. 
we have to look everywhere for the birds the ground level mid level the trees and of course in the air come let us study the basic first and we go through different different birds little by little slowly slowly coming to the size now for a beginner uh, there may be lots of others who are not beginners but i'll go through it all the same the size we we'll always say comparatively to the sparrow if you are seeing a bird for the first time you always say oh sparrow plus or sparrow minus all right so for that sake i put it as sparrow as 15 to 16 cm a bulbul would be 20 cm a common manna 23 cm a dove or a pigeon would be 33 a common crow would be 40 a black kite would be 47 and our hens would be 60 to 70 cm this would be without a binoculars you are just walking through the park biodiversity park and you've seen the bird this is how you'll talk in the size manner coming to the shape the silhouette you have just seen the silhouette so is it straight is it is it sleeping like this or is it straight is how you are going to describe it if you are carrying your binoculars then you go through the different parts if the bird gives you enough time of course so you go through the shape of the crown the neck the the scapular region or the wing regions and all the finer details of how the tail looks etc etc if the bird gives you enough time and if you are carrying your binox with you so the first most important thing to learn about birds should be your ears should be open because it's always you hear the bird before you see the bird so keep your ears open be very silent and as soon as you have spotted the bird look for the color see this blue and red bird your mind should come oh which are the birds which are blue and red it should all come in your mind immediately or with the help of a good book and the basic book of course should be the salim ali bird book still holds true if you get little more going on to the beak and from the beak you know what the bird is going to eat like this particular bird is the viger sun bird female and look at the curved beak from that itself oh it's a straw like beak it must be taking in nectar so the beak will give the story of what the bird is going to eat you have a big thick beak like the house sparrow beak it's going to eat seeds if you have a curved beak of a raptor or a bird of prey or a kite if you know then it will be a curved beak or a tearing beak it tears out the flesh so that it can eat similarly the birds also have different feet like a bird a duck cup for example will have webbed feet why because it needs to swim accordingly a perching bird will have three feet three claws in front and three one claw behind because it has to hold on to a branch while a woodpecker will have two claws in front and two claws behind because it goes round and round on a tree trunk so accordingly the what the behavior of the bird is what the habit is it will change its beak and feet so we have to look if time permits into all these details coming to what it eats now we have in this garden you have insectivorous birds now insectivorous birds are those birds 
which eats insects. I'll give you just an example, one or two examples, is the Indian robin, the magpie robin, and the little green bee eaters as well. Coming to fruit eating birds, you have the coppersmith barbet over here. And this coppersmith barbet is a fruit eating bird. Then you have the omnivorous birds. Omnivorous means it eats everything, whatever it sees, it just eats, like the common crow or the jungle crow. Carnivorous is those who eat flesh, those who eat meat, those who eat fish. These are carnivorous. And of course, the sunbirds are the birds which take in nectar. There are lots of other birds also, which you are going to make a list. It is your time to make a list and send it across to our nature watch to give us the nectivorous bird list, whatever you know, at the end of the session. So this is the sunbird which is taking nectar. Now let's do a little quiz time. Again, the answer would come in at the end of the presentation. Who are ovivorous? birds. Any guesses? I'll give you four examples. Bird eating birds, bird eating reptiles, bird eating mammals, or bird eating human race. You are going to write down, this is question number two. So you have question number one which has come in and question number two. The answers again should be shared at the end of it. Coming to garden birds. You have the red vented bullfrog. And hear the call of it. It's a two double whistle. Why? If you look at the red whisker, see the red whiskers or the red cheek. All right. The whistle will be more sweeter. See? And three notes. Now there are these are very commonly seen in our Ambivali Park, which is and even still more, which I will discuss as we are growing. So the red vented bulbul and the red whiskered bulbul. Coming on to more commoner birds which are seen are the rose ringed parakeet. See the rose ring which is only found in the males while the females have no rose ring at all. Then you have the common rock pigeon also called the feral pigeons. You have common manna. Now common manna is a very aggressive bird and they say that wherever the rose ring parakeets are more and the common manna is more, you find the other bird species are much less because of these two aggressive birds. The house sparrow is our house uh, used to be very common, but nowadays because we are enclosing our balconies, it doesn't come into our house. And it does not have a space to make a small nest. It normally used to make nests in ledges, in small crevices, inside your balconies, where it would feel safe away from cats. Now it does not have that space. And therefore, the house sparrow is becoming less and less. There is another story of the house sparrow also, which I would like to share. The in afterwards, as we grow further in the presentation, I will share that as well. The story of how sparrows are so important to us. The other birds inside the park are the black kites. You have the house crow and you have the jungle crow as well. They are also important because they act as scavengers. They clean up the place for you. They eat up all your rubbish that you throw. 
Now here we have an important word which is the Asian koel. And you know what it does? It goes on singing like this. This bird sings continuously, especially during the mango season. And you know, it goes and sits in front of a female crow's nest. And it irritates the crow so much, so much, that the female crow who is so peacefully, aram, say, sitting on her eggs and little nestlings, will get irritated by the continuous call. And once it gets irritated by the call, it will try to shoo away the male coil. Hmm? Now it shoes away the male coil, and then this female who is sitting right on top, quietly on top of the nest, will come down, come down, lay its eggs, and run away. It lays one single egg. So, therefore, this Asian coil is the fastest egg laying bird in the world. She lays her egg and runs away. Then, of course, the poor crow comes back confused, not knowing that there is another intruder in her nest already. And this is called brood parasitism. And this is a small video showing you how the house crow is fooled and how the coalition coil begs for food over here. The credit goes to Sarita Gotole. See the beak of this bird. This is also very commonly seen. This is a scaly breasted munia, and they are found in groups of six to eight birds together. And they are very fond of grass seeds. So you will see them on the grass levels, jumping in and out of the grass, and well camouflaged that you really have to observe and very shy. You go close, they'll run away and hide in the grass. You won't even be able to find out. And they have gone in a flash. So this is the seed-eating beak and seed-eating bird as well. Now, can you, this is the third question in my uh, presentation. You tell me the beak of this bird and what does it eat? A, B, C or D? The answer again. Would uh, yes, you are right. Yeah, it's you can uh, talk about it later. But whoever answered, I'm happy. Yes, it is the C. And can you guess the bird? All right, we move further. These are insectivorous birds. Now, coming to these, also are found in the Ambi Valley Biodiversity Park everywhere. Now you come to Ashipirinia. The, this is a small bird, little bigger than a sparrow, but it, its call is very beautiful. It goes jimmy, 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 jimmy. And it runs, rushes in and out. Again, a in low level uh, bird, which you have to see. And it eats all the insects. And therefore, it's a biological controller. You have the black drongo. Black drongos are known to hitch hikes on the kettle or the horses or on the donkeys. Whoever is there moving around, it will sit aram say on its back. And then when the cows are going forward, the mud goes up and down. It catches a small worm when it sees one. The same goes as a cattle egret. The name itself, cattle. Cattle says that you have partners with the farmer. And therefore, when the farmer is plowing its fields, you will find loads of cattle egrets going all around him. 
uh, catching all the worms. So the farmer also doesn't mind that at all because each one loves the other. Now look at it when it is wearing its wedding finery. This is its wedding gown. Every one of us dress up when we are going for a wedding. So why not the birds? The birds also like to dress up in their best finery, especially the male birds. The females are always drab. And why so? Very obvious reasons. It wants to attract a mate and get married and get settled down. There are other birds which also are there in the park, which are the tiger fly catchers. You have the Sykes lark and you have jungle babblers. Now, jungle babblers in Hindi is called Saad Bhai because they are always together and they babble, babble, babble and they create quite a big noise. So, you will hear them first, definitely, and then they will go hiding somewhere. But do you know in English, they are called seven sisters. I have no reason why sisters and brothers in Hindi. But so, just to make you smile on your face, this was a little thing which I wanted to share. But these are the best biological controllers for us. Sometimes, occasionally, you get a white spotted plantain. Are the insectivorous bird? You get the spotted doves all over, going gudr, gudr, all throughout the day, sitting in a shade under one tree on one of the branches in middle levels and you will just hear this bird going gutter, gutter, gutter all throughout the day. You have the little green bee eater. These, these little birds that you see here, you know the story of the little green bee eater which I would like to share. It's just a story. I don't know whether it's the truth or not. In Hindi, we call him, in Marathi, we call him Veda Raghu. Raghu means a parrot and Veda means mad. And the reason why they say it, because it goes round and round in circles, catching a little grasshopper or a little, uh, you know, uh, these flying insects which are flying around everywhere, even a butterfly or a moth, it will catch it, sit you know, dragonflies, it loves dragonflies. It will catch and hit the bird, uh, the, uh, the uh, dragonfly. It dies and it, then it swallows. So it goes round and round. It chases its prey. That is one story. The second story goes that Abhimanyu, he lost his way in the battle of, to come out of the battle of Mahabharat. They say, that this little green bee eater sat on the left side of the chariot and he went round and round and it distracted Abhimanyu so much that he lost his way. The womb and Abhimanyu story, everyone knows. But this is bird and Abhimanyu which I am sharing with you. Coming to the crimson-throated barbet or the coppersmith barbet. The coppersmith barbet is so called because it goes tuk, 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 like how a coppersmith would go hitting on hot metal. Now, this bird is also loves fruits, and this bird also is called Mumbai's bird. This was done so in one of the bird races in Mumbai, and they found. The survey said that this is the commonest bird around besides all the commoner ones, the crows, the sparrow, of course not the sparrow anymore, but the crows and the pigeons and the kites. This was the commonest bird around Mumbai city. And therefore, they called it, we label it as Mumbai bird. So this is the coppersmith barbet for you. Now coming to some more birds which you see in the park, but they have different 
male and female sexual dimorphism now i'll give you just three examples and in the bird world the male bird is very handsome very very handsome normally now here why because it has to attract a female this is the indian golden oriole and see the female the drab female over here while this is beautifully yellow colored then you have the purple rumped sunbird it's again got shiny beautiful coloration while the female is drab around here the magpie robin the magpie robin the male is handsome very black and white while the female is dull gray and white this is difference between male and female so sexual dimorphism is also seen in birds purple rum sunbird is a nice bird which comes even in your balconies it loves two flowers one the jamaican spike which it adores and your a shoe flower you if you have one you will definitely say after about one month two months when it realizes that oh you have a shoe flower growing here it will visit your balcony as well so this is how the purple rum sunbird takes its nectar it's a nectivorous as i have said coming to larger gardens like the ambivalent you have more birds in that you will have the white throated kingfisher which also is around there you have uh, asian paradise fly catchers you have barn owls the shikras tickles blue fly catcher i will talk about more and more as we are going through but give me a little story the importance of dead trees in a park in a biodiversity park do we cut it all down no why i tell you this story there was a family of spotted owlet in the hole of a dead tree knock knock comes the common manner hey i love this space can i have it and starts teasing them oh please shoo go away let me have this space they try to become big fat though they are very tiny and manages to let them go then you let the common manna run away temporarily it does go then you have the indian roller which comes knocking at the spotted owlet's hole and says knock knock i want this space please vacate it now and it waits and waits and waits can you guess who won the battle for one space the common manna the indian roller or the spotted owlet this is the question number which i want you to guess again this is the fifth quest fourth question which i have asked you we'll come back to the winner later on all right we move forward the common birds which you see here when you walk through the ambivalent biodiversity park let's go one by one you have the alexandrian parakeet now the alexandrian parakeet is bigger than the rose ringed par parakeet it also has a rose ring the male but it is bigger larger noisier voice and it has a red shoulder patch that's how you recognize it as the alexandrian parakeet then you have the pale billed flower pecker now the pale billed flower pecker is the smallest bird of india do you know the size of it 8 cm now this bird you will normally see around the cherry trees which are grown in the ambivalent park this is so small why because it has got no tail and again it takes the nectar also and it pecks on the 
flower also. So the name flower pecker. Occasional shikras are seen there trying to sit on one of the poles over there and looking down for small lizards and frogs. We have seen the pied crested cuckoo. Now you know the pied crested cuckoo is the harbinger of monsoon. Why do we call that? Because it flies, it's a monsoon migratory, migratory bird to Mumbai city. Pied crested cuckoo flies with the southwest monsoon winds and it reaches Mumbai shores 48 hours to 72 hours before the monsoon sets in to Mumbai. So all of us, when one see this bird, we say, wow, this bird has come. Now our heat is going to go away and we are going to be blessed with rains in Mumbai. That is why it's a good bird to sight. And again, it's a cuckoo family bird. So what happens? It gives its it lays its eggs in either the crow's nest or it likes the jungle babblers also. It nests over there as well. We go to long tail shrike. Now this bird in Hindi is also called as Gandhari. What do you mean by Gandhari? Gandhari is because it has the black eye patch. Now you know uh, Queen Gandhari of Mahabharata wore this black mask all throughout the Mahabharata war. And therefore, we just compare it to the Queen Ma Gandhari. Again, it has got another name also. Long tail shrikes are also called as butcher birds. You know why? Because it will sit at one place in a tall, in a mid sized thorny tree and it will wait and wait and wait looking down as soon as it sees a small lizard or a small frog it will jump down catch it and impinge it on after killing it it will impinge it on the thorn so that is its ladder why because it says i'm not hungry just now just leave it for some time and I'll eat it later, Aram say. So it stocks it on a tree, thorn. So therefore, it's called the butcher bird. You have southern cockle also seen in the park. Now these birds are also cuckoo family bird. But it is different from the other birds, a cuckoo family, because it builds its own nest. And also, it raises its own young ones. So it is different. It's also called a good luck bird. Why? Because the farmers like it a lot. It eats all the small little worms which are growing there. The lizards which are harmful for the crop. So when the cockle comes in, the farmer is very happy. And says, oh my, now my crops are safe. So it's going to be good here for me. So we call it a good luck bird. Occasional tickles blue flycatcher, a blue and red bird, is seen near the water bodies, also eating the mosquitoes and the insects, the flies around there. So it again controls the fly and insect population. The barn swallows in winter, this is the time when the barn swallows come down from the north and they go hovering around. They don't hover. They go around in, in about say eight or ten birds together. You will see them fly on top of you in the garden. They come down. They are winter visitors to Mumbai city. You also see Asian palm swifts. And do you know that Asian palm swift is the swift, swift birds have the shortest legs in the bird world. Not only that, they sleep, they eat, they even in flight. So imagine this bird hardly settles down on a tree branch. 
this is the type of energy the Asian palm swift has. This is a common tailor bird. It goes chick, 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 tweet, 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 from low to high crescendo. That is how you recognize this bird. And it tailor, it's a tailor bird. So it stitches and it stitches so beautifully. Come see this video. See the holes are made by the tailor bird. It takes the cobweb. This is the finished product over here. You can see the finished product here. This is how it finishes its home. And this is how it will have its nest. There are some rare visitors as well. You, we have seen Indian gray hornbills on the maua and the jamun trees, the tall maua and jamun trees, which are around the park as well. And they sit right high up and they call when especially during the fruiting season that come come let's join for breakfast together so you will see two to three birds sitting and enjoying the fruits over there you have a winter visitor also called the marsh harrier which comes in near the marshy lands around the park as well which is again seen quite often during december january you have the tiger flycatcher, which comes and rests here as a winter visitor, again, in our uh, biodiversity Ambivalli Park. During evening season, uh, evening times, five o'clock, six o'clock, sun is just about to settle. There are the spotted owlets, which come all two or three, come together, making little click sounds also, so that you look up and you will see them looking down for certain insects, larger insects is what basically they would eat. But a rare visitor, which I have seen, many have seen in, and I have recorded the forest owlet. Let me tell you the story of this bird. This bird, few years back, was thought to be extinct. Imagine, extinct. Nobody had sighted it for a long, long time. Dr. Pamela Rasmussen, who is of Smithsonian Museum fame and now eBird fame. She is responsible for all the splits which is happening at the present moment. Like you, Dr. Pamela has now said that it was 10,500 birds in the world. She has split it in all possible ways that we have now 11,000 birds 11,000 plus plus. She has recorded as 11,100. I am not very sure, but 11,000, I'm sure, is the number of species found in the world. She, along with PNHS Deputy Director Dr. Girish Jathar, did a lot of research on this forest outlet here in Milghat and found out that it is seen. And that is how it came back to us into Maharashtra, only seen in Maharashtra. And now in Tamsa Valley, uh, in Tamsa Wildlife Sanctuary, during the breeding season, it is regularly spotted in Tamsa, but rarely seen in Ambi Valley Biodiversity Park as well. And that was the time I was absolutely delighted and excited when I saw this bird. Why do we love owls? We all love owls because they are very cute, cute little guests. Not only cute, they have large eyes. They have a silent flight. They are nocturnal and they are excellent hunters. And they cut down the rodent population. 
and uh, definitely if you want to attract owls in the garden you must have some big large tree with nest or make a big nest uh, a big hole like a box where it can just roost and it can sleep your lights should be dim and you have some perch where it can perch and look down for uh, rodents the owls are the night watchmen is goddess lakshmi's favorite they are hospital hospitable they help in increasing the owner's wealth and beneficial to the owner by the magnitude of their habitats we've spoken a lot about the gardens and the parks what are the hazards we'll rush through it in a faster manner we have squirrels and always see that squirrel friendly yard is not a bird friendly habitat why because squirrels irritate the birds they eat small birds they eat their eggs so squirrels act as extreme nuisance then you have cats cats are even if they are pampered pets they have razor sharp instincts for hunting and they will stalk smaller birds naturally even frogs and mammals come in and therefore the biodiversity changes chemicals we want a beautiful lawn we want uh, no worms there no weeds around then we put in chemicals which definitely is toxic to the birds and other wildlife as well rats these are the main villain one pair will multiply and produce 880 mice in one year imagine the damage it creates but for that we require to have bigger owls to eat them the sticky traps i'm talking of those well manicured who don't like rats coming in or any other uh, you know lizards coming in they put these silly sticky traps and do you know what happens when you put these sticky traps on the rat and the food they keep the rat tends to come there and uh, will get stuck on it once it gets stuck i see in the air there is a raptor there or uh, there is some other bird looking down at the rat oh this is an easy meal and it comes down what happens it also gets stuck the feathers get stuck i had a bad incident which i'll never forget for life that i had a small little rat in the house somebody gave me this sticky trap i put the right the the a mouse came in it of course got but unfortunately one pigeon also came in and it got stuck and i just couldn't bear to see the pigeon i had to lift him i tried my level best took him to a vet to cut it but unfortunately i lost it the bread scraps we know we humans throw a lot of our food out for these birds like cookies donut chapati bread cow na cow ha the birds will eat it we say nahi nahi kyu fekne ka birds kha jayega do you know this is junk food for the avian bird world or the avian bird they these birds eat this as easy meal and they cause obesity growth deformations and even other health problems so be careful be, be think twice before giving feed to these birds you have landscape fabrics they look beautiful but these fabric which control the weeds is a threat to the birds they the insectivorous birds which tend to feed on the under the weeds are are blocked and they even tend to uh, take out the fabric or you know uh, pull on to the fabric strands and put them as nesting material and which is hazardous for their little ones for the nestlings because they might get choked or they might pose hazards for that particular nestling so please avoid landscape fabric non native plants this also looks so beautiful 
in your lovely backyard. But why? The non-native plants are less easily recognized by birds. So they are not useful for meeting the birds' needs. And they tend to grow more vigorously and overcrowd the ones which are native plants. So please try to avoid that as well. You have drier limbs. Don't throw this. That Oh, this will help out for the birds. No. As nesting material, the mud, the twigs, the pine needle and the plant down makes better nesting material than your drier linens. The dirty for bird feeders, they would attract fungus and cause lungs, fungal lungs, uh, fungus in their bird lungs and, and cause death to them. Please, if you have a bird feeder, keep it clean. That is important. Again, a dirty bird bath will attract, you know, infection to the bird and it becomes a breeding ground for mosquitoes, which will transit diseases to humans as well. So keep the bath clean as possible empty bird feeders. Don't keep them hanging. Kabhi na kabhi to aega mera ek sparrow. No, if they are not coming, they will not come. So it will only attract unwanted insects like the wasps, the hornets, the rats, the mice. Why create this problem? Take it down. The unsafe bird houses. You have brightly colored, beautiful looking. It's not going to attract a bird. The lack of ventilation will kill the nestlings. Improper positioning, the bird will not come. And the position is such when the, a storm comes, like today itself, we have a thunderstorm coming into Mumbai. Now, if you have placed your, it's an uh, absolutely out of the world thunderstorm today. Now, if that comes, the bird house is going to fall. If the bird hole, the entrance hole is too big, the aggressive birds will come in and attack the nestling. So unsafe bird houses are a big no-no as well. Dogs. Sometimes dogs harass the small little babies which have just fallen down onto the grass. And they really deliberately not kill them, but they harass them and make them very vulnerable. And the bird might die as well. Now, give you a short list of plants which attract birds. Especially, I would like to talk about the red silk cotton tree. The red silk cotton tree is a beautiful endemic tree to India. Please plant this tree in your gardens if at all you have one. And this, at one stage, when it's flowering, it has beautiful nectar coming. And not only the nectivorous birds, but even the drongo, even the crows, even the common manners come to take in a sip of nectar from this red silk cotton tree. The fruits which come have got a lot of cotton which are used for the nesting material. So this acts as an excellent garden tree. You have the list which is also over here which is jamun. You have the ficus, which is very important fruit tree for all the birds as well. A few plants to attract butterflies because butterflies in turn will attract birds as well. You have the marigold, you have periwinkle, coxcomb, lemon, curry patta, these and the giant milkweed are few of the uh, uh, plants which attract butterflies. The climbers and the creepers are the rangoon creeper. You have the sky blue cluster vines, the flame vines and the trumpet vines, which attract birds as well. There are certain shrubs which I would like to say which attract birds are the lantana. You have the isora, the shufla, the Jamaican spike, the Indian screwbush and glory bower. These are all seen in the biodiversity park 
as well. The ecology importance, which I said that I'll tell you the story of the sparrow. There was one Chinaman. Now he, these, uh, the, the, the head of Chinese uh, person gave the China, gave her this, that all right, kill all sparrows. So the Chinese government killed millions of sparrows. They are a nuisance. They are bad. This is how the Chinese head spoke. What happened? 15 to 45 million people died of starvation in that year. Why? Because the locust population ballooned, swarming the country, killing thousands because of famine, which happened in this Chinese government area. Now, the lesson learned was very bad. And the ornithologist at that time, Su Sin Gang, pointed out that since you killed all or most of the sparrows which eat large number of insects, the grains got destroyed. So, in 1960, they withdrew this campaign and even imported sparrows from Soviet Union. This is the importance of our house sparrow. See how important it is to us. The granivorous birds, like the rose ring parakeet, does call a lot of harassment to the, the granaries of our country. So please don't keep out the seeds for the rose ring parakeet. Do not attract them. Oh, I got a rose ring parakeet eating from my feeder. No, they are hazardous. They are multiplying in huge numbers like the rock pigeons and therefore creating a lot of damage to the grains of our country. Don't keep out artificial grains and seeds for rose ring parakeets. So I'd like to take, give you a take home message here that bird droppings consist of many implant nutrients such as nitrogen and phosphorus. These nutrients make great fertilizers as they increase the quality of soil and its water holding capacity. Birds help as pest controls. They clean the environment. They help in seed dispersing and pollination. Birds take part in building up a new ecosystem. And lastly, I cannot forget that bird tourism has come up in a big bang way. There were once the Bodo hunters, especially in Assam, that used to hunt birds. There were birds in Nagaland. In large numbers, the Amur falcon was hunted and eaten as snacks. But today, thanks to all our efforts together, we have turned them into excellent bird guides. And they have helped in in bird tourism. So birds are inherently beautiful creatures from building nests to pollinating flowers and even creating a creative structures in the ecosystem. Hence the importance of bird in every stage of life. I will also say that birds give us magical heals. They heal the heart. They heal the mind and they heal the soul. And here is a video. Maybe most of you have heard this, but I would like you as a reminder that see how bird songs will heal you and give and make you prepared for a good dinner at eight o'clock.
Biodiversity Park. The call number is written here and or email info at rate inaturewatch.org. From 1st December to 24th December 2023, Naturalist Training Program is happening at Ambivali Biodiversity Park. Please sign up on www.inaturewatch.org. Finally, I would like to acknowledge this presentation, my acknowledgements are to eBird, Xenocantho Asia, Dr. Isaac, the, and Wikipedia, photographs and videos taken from the internet and Google only for educational purposes. Lastly, but not the least, Dr. V. Subalakshmi for giving me this opportunity to talk to you. I would also like to thank you all for a patient hearing. Thank you all. This is what I would like to talk as my wonder world, the biodiversity nature park. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Ketki. Uh, if anybody has any queries, you can ask, unmute yourself and ask, or you can write in the chat box as well. Uh, hi, Ketki. Uh, that was a wonderful presentation. Beautiful photos and videos uh, presented very well by you. Uh, just a question. Is there a water body in the park, within the park? Uh, we made an artificial pond, uh, which is uh, attracting uh, some of the, uh, you know, we have fowls also coming in, like the, the uh, sometimes we have seen uh, the the quail, the quail family walk in also. There okay. is a small artificial body which we have made, and outside the park, just very close to the park, there is a water body. That's how the marsh area comes in. It it goes through the park. Yes, there is not a big, huge lake or a no, but we have a small artificial water body. Okay, because that would be useful since you mentioned about the marshes. I was yes. just wondering. Anyway, that's good. Outside. The marshes are outside. We have a water body around the butterfly area, and the butterflies get attracted. And around that water body, there is a Chinese, uh, 
uh, cherry trees, you know, which are grown there, which also attract uh, a lot of uh, birds e feeding on them. I've even seen the rose finch, which I have not written, uh, okay. in the in feeding on the uh, near the water body. It's a small water body. It's not a very big water body. Okay, but uh, have you uh, seen any dragonflies around? Dragonflies, damselflies, yes. because they are also yes. food for some of the insectivores. Yes, yes, lots of them, especially okay. your uh, post, just post monsoon. Lots of butterflies, lots of dragonflies, lots of damselflies, which come in because the water streams down. Okay, thank you. No problems, no problems whatsoever, Abhi. All right, so should we end so all of you can have a wonderful dinner? I hope it was not very boring, but just as informative as much I can give you all. Thank you very much. I will connect now. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank okay. you, everyone, for joining the webinar. Uh, just a point actually answers you have not told that you told at the end of the sessions you will discuss on them all right would you be nice and uh, give me the answer so i can say yes or no to question number one what are ab bores yeah most of them applied that bird sitting birdings because it's avis because right. they avionics right. yes you are right second question what is the beak Coppersmith Babbitt is the answer. Yes, Coppersmith Babbitt and the C was the, it eats yes. fruits. Yes. The third, you have written it out, sir. So, Mendra, sir, Mukhabadhyaya. Yeah, right. You are asking who will be the owner of that. Yes. Uh, yes. Net. Yes, please. Yes. Uh, people have commented spotted outlet. No, it I'm was sure the that. common who, who stole the show. Yes, the common men stole the show. Yeah. Anything else? I'm not recollecting any other questions you have put. No, it's okay. You can send me across and I will definitely answer you later. Yeah, all right. Okay, ma'am. Sure. All right. All right. Thank, Thank you so much, ma'am. All right. Thank you.